Hi, John Tui here, Solaris Knight and uh, Doggy Kruger. And a shout out to Action Activate. Stay tuned. Hello, I'm Gazbot, and welcome to Action Activate. And if this is Action Activate, then with me as always, of course... Hey, it's your boy, the Big Dog Defender, uh, just like how Gazbot start, likes Why would you start that way? Intro. Okay, so we are uh, supposed to be talking to Jeffrey Dolan, a uh, veteran uh, Power Rangers voice actor and just all-around actor guy. Uh, he, we assume, is running late. Um, I'm, talk, I'm sending him messages. But we didn't want to keep waiting and not have a show. So basically, what, what's going to happen is the show's live. We're doing it right now. Um, we're 10 minutes late, you know, but we wanted to get it going. If he shows up, we'll throw him on and we'll do the interview like we were planning on doing. And, that, and then there you go. If not, we're just going to hang out and do some Ranger chat and do some questions. And we'll reschedule an interview with him another time. Um, I Yeah, I, I that's the best I could do. <laughs> yeah. With that in mind, hello in chat to Nia Lights, Brian Ennis, Foxy Ranger 3 by 9, and uh, Brian Ennis again. Hello, everybody. Oh, and Lewis <laughs> Wilson going back a little bit. I'm also going to say hello to everyone, just not individually. Just he, uh. He's just piggybacking off of me, everybody. So yeah, Absolutely. Uh, one thing um, is you and I haven't done a live show without kind of, you know, a key topic in mind in a while. It's true. Um, so I'm going to start it off with the Lightning Collection Wave 10 rumors. Well, here's here's something awesome. I don't know them. I saw hey! I saw Toy Wizards or somebody go like Lightning Collection Rumor 10, and I'm like, oh, yeah. I should look into that later. Didn't watch it. So you could tell me what the rumors are as well as anyone in the chat that doesn't know, and this will uh, keep us going until uh, hopefully Mr. Jeffrey Dolan shows up. So once again, prefacing this now, these are rumors. Are they probably correct? I'd like to think so. Are they definitely correct? <laughs> no way to know until we know where they came out. from. Are these uh, finding codes and decoding them? Yeah, it was another situation like that. I read the article from Toy Wizards, and what we surmised was it's maybe, probably, could be whatever. Uh, Zio Yellow, and there was a Pink Ranger. And I'm Zio totally makes sense. Pink blanking. Time. Well, no, we already know Time Pink's coming, right? I think it was. I think that was time pink. No, time green. I believe was on there as a maybe, but it wasn't. Uh, time Lights, pink. Uh, is, actually has the real scoop. Oh, there we go. <laughs> oh, perfect. It's great. Perfect for me. Operation there we go. Drive is my favorite season. I, ju I just get all the Rangers I've wanted this whole time. Thanks, Hasbro. Wow. <laughs> I would actually really like a Mercury Ranger figure. I think that's a really cool suit. Well, here's the thing: if they didn't do it Chrome, you would hate it. I would be disappointed, um, but I, and I, they won't do it Chrome. But if they did it shiny, at least I, I'd be happy. Um, before we get further into that, uh, I, well, finish that, and then there's a question I would like to answer. Um, there's a kind of the wild card out of it. So there's a green, a pink, and a yellow. Zeo yellow, Time Force green. Um, I'm totally blanking on the pink, and I'll look it up later. Or if you know, tell us down below. Um, and then the last one might be a villain like a clipter like it was something where the code was like in space or it could be in space over who knows but either way i will take any in space character because i want that but out of all of them what i don't get what their weird thing is about turbo and why they like bandai and hasbro have both neglected turbo for a while well, I mean, it's not a it's a secret. It's not it's not a secret that Turbo wasn't the most popular season. Um, but I feel like it's one of so I understand on one level, but I feel like it's one of those things where 
even if it wasn't the most popular season then, now it's considered one of the classic core early Zordon era teams. And there are members, the civilian forms that people like, even if they didn't like that season. Personally, I like Turbo. I'm one of the weirdos. I saw it as an adult, as a kid, maybe I wouldn't like it, but I actually enjoyed Turbo. Um, but I think they're looking at it from the lens of like the nineties, like, Ooh, that almost killed power Rangers. Whereas now it's like, Oh, people have nostalgia. And I think the turbo suits are cool. I, I, I think the helmet the suits are awesome. It's yeah. a thing where like, I forget where I saw it or read it, but somebody was saying that, um, some of the seasons that we don't like as fondly at the time, we still really like find joy in them as like a overall Ranger community when they come back later, just for a little bit, like everybody's like, Justin's the worst. And then in in space, it's like, Justin's here. Yeah. Well, and even beyond that, how many people that have the money, at least that collect these toys just want everybody on all the teams, even if it's not their favorite team or their favorite Ranger, you want all the teams. So there's an opportunity there. There's Red, who for at least half the season was Tommy, the most popular Ranger of all time, whether he's your favorite or not. It's just a fact. So that's very bankable. And um, also there are Japanese fans who maybe liked Car Ranger because it it was very popular over there. So it's like it, it is odd that they wouldn't at least do Red. You figure they would do Red. Well, the thing that gets me, too, is and we don't know all the decisions or processes that are made. But to me, when Hasbro takes over the license, you go Mighty Morphin for whatever you can. I get that. You go for fan favorite stuff or stuff that's current sometimes, looking at you, Hasbro, and it's okay. But then also you look and it's like, what toys did both Japan and America have a lot of that's pretty diluted? And what toys did they not really? And Turbo's a prime example where we got the Red Ranger figure and that weird, like, Super metallic chromy one years back, and that was it. Uh, well, they did do it in Super Mega Force and, and the Red. That's what I'm saying. There. We got um, Red. Good news. Uh, I sorry to interrupt. But good news. Jeffrey Dolan has just confirmed he will be here. He's running late, but Boom. he is on his way. So for those that are here specifically for him, he's a coming. Um, so the rumor, the lightning, the the Wave Ten rumors are actually not that great because you're kind of like, uh, here's a bunch of colors. I don't know what teams uh, like. So that's that's the least. Uh, but I I want to turn on a light. But I'm going to throw this up there. That's always a fun question. Ooh. So if I had to be any ranger, who would I be? So this is tough. I'll, I'll go first. Okay. Um, this could change day to day with me. I mean, there's a couple favorites, but today Same. I'm going to say, and, and this won't be a shock because it's one of the ones I always say, but today I'm going to say it would be Samurai Gold. Um, okay. Other days it might be Casey from Jungle Fury, but Samurai Gold I always come back to because he's shiny, which I love. He has a super speed attack, which I love. He's kind of goofy, but he's a competent fighter. He's sort of an outsider that he's like, oh, I can't be a ranger. Too bad to be a ranger anyway. Like he's got this sort of punk rock aesthetic DIY built his own morpher. So I, I like the suit. I like the the character. I like the, the weapon, the Barracuda blade. Like there's a lot about that I like. And it's just, a, yeah, I could see myself being that guy. <sighs> I have a lot of options. And while I, you're thinking, Brian Ennis, who asked the question, would be Dino Fury Red. <laughs> that is a good one. Like, yeah. there's not was- really a bad answer. It's so I'm going to preface mine the same way as Gaz is, where I, depending on the day or my mood, it could change. Right now, knee jerk reaction when you said it, I mm-hmm. really like the, and this has nothing to do with the character in Sentai versus Power Rangers. Speed it up. Jeffrey Dolan's waiting. A titanium. <laughs> I, I just it's think neat. it's cool that they have that morpher that they created and he's right. so unique and everything. And he's got an ax then it turns into a blaster, like super awesome stuff. That's who I would go with. <laughs> Good choice. And American only, but enough hearing us blather on filling air. We have with us legendary veteran voice actor and face actor, Jeffrey Dolan. Ho- Oops. Hold on. I gotta, I gotta bring oh. him in. Hold on. There he is. <laughs> Hello, sir. Hey. Hello. How Hello. How are we? Uh, Good. How are you? Right. How are you doing? I'm uh, not bad, not bad. I'm, a, I'm in the unusual situation of having gotten my time slightly uh, awry, and so I'm doing this uh, sitting in the front seat of my Ford Ranger. There oh, you I, go. Yeah, I have a Ford we, as well, so we're uh, we're similar in that instance. Nice. <laughs> but you should go get in your Ford so that you guys can yeah. bond over. I know I can. <laughs> Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us. Um, we we have a lot of people in chat are very excited to speak to you as well as us. Right, so cool. Thank you so much. Um, 
Well, for those that don't know, and I think most people here do, um, do you want to just sort of give a brief who you are, what you've done in Power Rangers? What, you know, what, who are you? I know, but they might yeah. not. <laughs> yeah, sure, sure. So, uh, yeah, Jeffrey Dolan, um, I'm a New Zealand actor uh, and have been acting for nearly 40 years now, um, uh, pretty much uh, nonstop. And Power Rangers is certainly part of my uh, menu of, of uh, 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 productions I've been a part of. And according to... Uh, uh, Blake uh, Devonport, I've been apparently one of the longest serving ones on the show. I, did, I think I did my first uh, ever character, which was an acting character in 2003. Uh, might, might have even been 2002 I did it, and it came out in 2003. So, yeah, and I literally just submitted um, an audition today for another character for the latest series. Oh, that's awesome. So, well, awesome. Yeah. The, the first right. season was uh, Ninja Storm, right, Correct. that you were on? Uh, you, you, you know better than me. <laughs> yes, I, I, com I confirmed it was Ninja Storm. Okay, okay. Yes, I, I, I've said it on a few other things. The, the funny part about this whole connection with Power Rangers is New Zealand has very little to do with it other than uh, producing it and, and performing it. Um, until very recently, it, it didn't screen here. Um, right, so, yeah, just yeah. Like, so like 2010 or something like that it started showing finally. Uh, I'm not aware of it even being that late. I tripped over it uh, last year when I was uh, just channel surfing on our right. main channels. We might have been able to view it on, on the part, one of our pay-per-view or streaming channels. Oh, right. Uh, yeah. Sky through Disney or something like that. But it, has, it hasn't been on any of our maiden network uh, shows, uh, channels over here until late last year. It came That's got to be so too. surreal to be working on such a big show and like yeah. nobody you know sees it, basically. No. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so our awareness of the whole structure and the stories and the and uh, the, the the sequence and the different um, you know, mystic force, et cetera, et cetera, ninja. Uh, we just we just haven't followed it, and we just so we're just so far behind on it. So unless we, you know, involved with the production uh, heavily as, right. as a voice artist, you get sent the scenes you are doing, and you don't you don't get to see the rest of the story. So you don't actually see the episode you're even involved in. Right, and that's got to actually be uh, extra hard because you need to generate the emotion, the voice, and all that stuff based on like a tiny snippet. You don't even get to know the whole context. Yeah, yeah, correct. Yeah, so I mean, we we get it's, it's improved over the years. We get better and better information nowadays, and and even today, when I, as I say, did this uh, little audition, um, we got a real nice synopsis of what the character's progress is going to be, and mm -hmm. and what sort of character they're really looking for, and 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 it gave you context for the audition because you only do really a page of of an for an audition, um, right. just for them to get a flavour of what you can do. Uh, so yeah, so but when it comes to the series, yeah, they're getting better now. When you start the series, that you, you get told a little bit about the flow, but but within the context of the whole C uh, series, or within even that episode, right, you, you don't really understand how that storyline flows through. So it's it's quite unique. Hmm. And awesome. so when you went in today, if you can answer this, I don't, did they show yeah, you yeah. an image of the character that you were auditioning for, or did they not even uh, show you that? And, and you, I'm on the road at the moment, so I'm, I had to I, I had to self record it. Uh, so I didn't get to see an image. Um, I just got to see the uh, the synopsis briefing and and the character breakdown. So yeah. Oh okay. That, again, that's even harder. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, here's hoping you get it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah, Fingers right. crossed. Yeah. Um, this is the big dog, by the way. He's my co-host. Uh, you guys haven't officially met, but hello, here he is. hello. I know uh, a lot <laughs> of a lot of stuff on the fly, but I mean, I've I've seen I think more of you than me for sure, and uh, <laughs> you seemed pretty pretty easy to chat with. So glad we get yeah. to. Yeah, today. we both watched the the one you did with uh, on the Morphin Network, uh, and and oh. so we oh, great, we okay. both feel like we know you now. <laughs> oh, okay. oh. Oh, hopefully I can I can uh, answer some new questions or some different ones. Well, that's part of the reason we watched it was so that we didn't want to reproduce all the exact same questions, oh, right. which will be cool. difficult because some people are, you know, they're watching and don't want to know the same stuff, but you know, yeah, sure. that's right. <laughs> um, well, actually big dog, you want to start off? You got a question? Yeah. Um, in regards to obviously being on so many different seasons, is there one kind of particular moment where you at, were either getting ready for a character or in the midst of doing voice? for a character where you're like it really hit you like kind of the impact you're having on Power Rangers as a whole um, I, I don't think I really became aware of that until um, these interviews started occurring last year during COVID uh, during that outbreak of COVID um, and Blake Allen got in touch and then uh, Ryan got in touch and wanted to do interviews and just through their uh, questioning and their description of the of the uh, conventions and the following, 
I became, that's where I became really aware of like, wow, this is just at a completely different level than what I was um, aware of or expecting. Um, so yeah, I suppose that's more where it came sort of personally aware. Um, there was an instance not long ago, a couple of years, no, last, yeah, started last year when I came up, I was actually out of town working and I flew up to do a day on one of the, I just did one of those little uh, cameos that I've done in the last couple of years as the janitor or the courier guy. Right. And one of the, one of the producers came up to me and said, oh, I, I got in touch with you. I, I thought you did such a great job last time. You're so fun. I really wanted to get you back. And that was like really sort of humbling to go, well, cool. Okay. I obviously have had an impact. I think you're breaking up a little bit there. Jeffrey? Uh-oh. Big Dog, you still with us? I am, yeah. I think it was just a, a little uh, turbulence connection. Uh, inter- or, yeah, turbulence. Good word for it. Yeah. Jeffrey? We can hear you. It's just a little bit choppy right you now. Cut, you cut out a little bit at the end there, yeah. Uh, maybe not. All right, well, let's... Uh, Jeffrey? Well, maybe he'll unfreeze or call back. Let me let me check the chat while uh, while we Evox followed us here. I didn't even. Believe- I know. <laughs> oh, okay. He, so that- he did mention the last season, so it, it is uh, mm. you know, fitting that Beast Morphers makes its <laughs> return, whether we asked for it or not. Right. It's true. Uh, well, let's see. Um, Toku Kid was saying that he would be a cheat and be Mega Force Silver because you could be anyone I want. I've thought about that too, but you still have to be the base. You have to be Orion, and I don't yeah. think I would be Orion. That's why I didn't pick that. But that's a fair, you know. Um, I'm similar to Ryan where I have a big, uh, you know, Cobra tattoo on my back. That's slowly <laughs> creeping up uh, Fox Ranger. This is again, questions before uh, Jeffrey showed up. What do you guys think of the new power Rangers season? Power Rangers Dino Fury. Uh, so far we like it. I think big dog likes it more than me. Correct. I like it, but I'm skeptical. I'm waiting. I feel like it could go either way. I like it so far, but what are they going to do? And it's, it's a lot of highs and lows. Big dog, I think is generally thumbs up. Correct. Um, I do like the suits a lot. Um, yeah, the suits are great. I, it's funny. Uh, I love the suits for that, and then uh, Zenkaiger, the newest Sentai season. And I haven't wanted like to watch the, a Sentai season. Well, no, not that. Um, like I'm usually like half tempted by the Japanese toys, and I'm like really tempted by the Zenkaiger <laughs> stuff. Like uh, I have been getting back into a little bit of a model kit kind of spree. So I've been I built actually here. I'll just grab it since we're. Go ahead and grab it. I uh, got this for Christmas and just built it up. It's a uh, common Rider Hibiki. Oh, okay, that's very cool. That could be a villain in Power Rangers, like yeah. a general or something. So comes with a stand, which I didn't expect, which is kind of cool. And then I'm grabbing uh, his other hands with effect parts. Oh, uh, another that. question, uh, Brian. Has, well, she said this was for all three of us, but uh, Jeffrey's not here. And also, he might not know because he just said he doesn't really get to watch. But if you had to drive any Megazord, what Megazord would you drive? <laughs> I, uh, the SPD base. Oh, the base. Yeah. I I might go old school. Well, see, I want to say Dragon Zord because I love the Dragon Zord because I'm a big Godzilla fan. But you I'm don't taking actually get to drive and do a, a I, new account. Yeah, you don't actually get to drive it. Um. I do like the SPD base Megazord with the, with the pistols. I think that's really awesome. Yeah. But I also got SPD on the brain because we just watched it. So I'm like hyped on it. Um, maybe, maybe Jungle Fury base Megazord. I like that one with like the kicks and stuff and it looks all tigery. Oh, yeah. Okay. I like that one a lot. Yeah. That, that, although I will say Super Mega Force with the pirate wheels looks kind of fun. Yeah. <laughs> that does look kind of fun too. I, I initially I was thinking turbo. I'm like, I don't love the turbo Zords. They're just cars. Yeah, I like the Megazord, but the cars are, are boring to me. Yeah. yeah. Um, so let's see. Question is, let's go say, like a lot of people saying hi. Uh, what in the Dino, Dragon Zord? I like that. Okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, Lewis is saying he likes the Dino Fury suits as well. Uh, you go ahead and talk about that figure, whatever I'm talking about. I'm going to see if I could uh, hook up with Jeffrey and see what's going on. Yep. Um, one thing, so Bandai does it, and they must have a contract with like Common Rider. But uh, these things are great, man. If they had these for Rangers or Sentai suits, I would get probably every single one. They're usually in between the price of like a Hasbro Lightning Collection figure and a SH Figure Arts. But you obviously build them their model kit. And this one, I mean, it's hard to tell kind of the shine. Um, but he is metallic. The stickers, even though they're there, 
weren't terrible, but like all these shiny parts are all stickers. And I would love to, you know, hone the craft, if you will, um, on some Sentai suits just because these Kamen Rider ones are great and I can't get enough of them right now. Good news. Uh, Jeffrey Dolan, uh, I'm talking to him on another chat. Uh, he, because he was in his car, he couldn't get the signal back. He's heading to his house, which he said he should be back on in about 10 minutes. So again, sorry for the delay. He's doing us of a favor. He's, he's in you know New Zealand and he's driving around between auditions. The fact that he's talking to us is awesome. So yes, uh, if we're going to keep talking and Power Rangers answering questions, whatever you guys want to do for the next 10 minutes, and then he'll come back and we'll get back to you know what you came here for because we're we're always here flapping our gaps but it's true i meant gums we're flapping the, our gaps the thing I, I the thing i do like just because i'm for this show anyway the king of technical difficulties is it's oh, not you why, thing. No, no 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 not that it's like oh why are we having connection issues oh i uh was uh auditioning for the current power rangers yeah. And I didn't even have everything that everybody else had and knock on wood, hopefully still gets it. Like that's the thing. Yeah. 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 That's, that's a level of multitasking and he's got a lot going on. So it's, it's yeah. hard to be like, Oh, you're right. Like he could have canceled. He could have been like, sorry guys, I can't make it, but he didn't. He's like, okay, I'm running late. Sorry about yeah. that. So that's, Su that's super good. solid work ethic. Yeah. Just from professional. the limited amount we've interacted with them. Absolutely. So, uh, while we're waiting, I'm saying, while we're waiting. Yeah. Um, if you guys want to throw out questions just to us like you were before, feel free. If you have questions for him, I would say wait um, because they might get pushed off and then we'll forget yep. to get back to them. So any questions for Jeffrey, just just wait. Um, but for us or if you uh, – you know, I had a, I was going to show – about to show a clip. You know, I, I was going to wait till he was – I'll show it now. Well, I have a clip of him from Beast Morphers when he was the janitor that I was going to throw up. Blech, no, <laughs> that I was going to put on the screen because I wasn't sure if he'd ever seen it or not. I'll wait. I was going to show it to you guys, but I'll, I'll wait because he may not have actually been able to see himself. So I thought that'd be fun. Um, let's see. Fox oh, Rangers. Astro Megazord. That's Astro the one Megazord. I forgot of. I do like the Astro Megazord. And then you could go into space. So that's pretty cool, too. Oh, so uh, Brian Ennis, you are just all about Dino Fury. You want to be Dino Fury Red in the Dino Fury Megazord. I mean, You're to consistent. be fair, we talked about it in episode yeah. two. That was one of the best intro Zord oh, yeah. fights I've ever seen in Power Rangers. I period. agree. With, with the roar and, and the dinosaur runs out and then transfers. He's like jumping over overpasses and throwing high kicks. That and was then every awesome. combo was like, and rearrange. And we got a yes. dino punch and do this. And we yeah. got a like everything was awesome. Agreed. Um, have you gotten the Dino Fury Morpher yet? are you going to eventually i'm i haven't i've seen it um if i saw it on sale maybe Same. i don't i don't i i almost feel like i would rather get the japanese one because i know it's better yep but i don't know i know it probably goes for a lot more money so i'm like yeah. you know with, with beast morphers the go busters one didn't tempt him like this one's great it's fine you know but for some reason the american and i think it's the keys is what's doing it for me it's yep. just got these cheap looking keys and it reminds me of the american versus the japanese super mega force keys where i got like we both did we had all the american ones and i still got the japanese one and have a ton of the because they they're so much better like because they uh, look like I, the props from the show so i agree that i like that it looks like the prop from the show but key to key i kind of liked the americans a little bit more in some ways they were so squat. I, they had they had the, the flip, which was cool. Like the, the flip strength. was cool. The yeah. thing I appreciated, though, from a collecting standpoint, was yeah. they were all uniform. Because for for the, the ones now, what do you mean not uniform? For the Japanese keys, you had some that were stickers. Oh, you had some oh that were got it. They were all the same size, but from a distance, they look uniform. But they're not correct. It's, I don't actually. I would prefer they were all painted. The sticker, not sticker thing, is annoying, but I don't really care. The, the thing that the American has over Japanese that to me is objectively better is that you could get every key without having to pay a million dollars. It was possible to just get every key. There were some that came in sets and it might've been annoying, but the Japanese ones, there are keys that are like a hundred dollars for one key now. And it's, yeah. you know, or the sets that are like hundreds of dollars. So I have a pretty good, I keep looking this way because it's over there. I have a pretty good Japanese key collection. Uh, and it's not even half complete. And to complete the other half would cost me you're, like thousands. You're over half complete, I thought. Uh, me, no, I don't know. Maybe, maybe, maybe in terms of numbers of keys, but in terms of money spent, I would have to spend more than I've already spent. Oh yeah. 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 That's collection. like, it's ridiculous. 
that's like with morphers though. You could have a bunch of morphers and be like, well, I don't have titanium and that's a bunch and I don't have the, and like, yeah. I, yeah. I think from somebody who's less biased than he is, he is a great Japanese Ranger key collection, but yes, there are some gaps that will never be filled. Well, for example, well, and, and maybe they will be filled. I don't even have the whole Mighty Morphin slash Zoo Ranger team. I have some, but not all, you know, things like that. Um, Alexander the Gang was not said, anyone been lucky to find the latest, uh, latest wave of lightning collection? Um, no, nope. I rarely see lightning collection in the stores by me. And Same. when I do, it's like, oh, this is the common one from three waves ago. Excuse me. I do have on pre-order um, SPD pink and Zeo green. That's the current wave we're talking about, right? Uh, was there one before that? Yes. Yeah, okay. that's the current wave. I have S S SPD pink and Zeo green on pre-order from Hasbro Pulse, which means I will get them at retail three months after everybody else, but yeah. I'll get them. And that's why I do that because who knows if I'll ever see them in a store. We, we both live in the Bay area of California and I don't know if we get, I don't think we get less than everyone else. I just think it's nerd Haven here yeah. and everybody buys them and either keeps them or resells them. It's just, yeah, it's really, to, really to be honest though. I don't really hunt anymore. Well, yeah, with COVID, but I go to target at least once a week. Cause that's where I do my food shopping. See, I don't, I don't even do that anymore. So that, like, I don't remember the last time I actually looked in like the Power Rangers section in like two plus weeks. I, I like I said, I've gone to I, I've been in stores that sell Power Rangers at least once a week, at least sometimes more if I have to go get milk or something. And the only figures I've seen, I've seen Dino Fury, uh, sorry, Dino, Dino Thunder Red, and I've seen the two packs and the monsters that are not new. Um, and that's it. That's the only stuff I've seen anytime like in the last month. Uh, let's see here. Um, Talking about the morpher, but I agree the Japanese is one of the best. Key. Yeah, yeah. And, and again, I got both, so obviously I like both. But yeah. I don't want to do that again. If I start collecting the Dino Fury or the uh, and and actually for those that follow the show, I already have the Megazord. I'm looking for it, but it's downstairs. The Megazord so from from you, uh, Ryu Soldier, which was the Japanese Dino Fury. So I, I'm already kind of dipped my toe in the Japanese on that. But what a lot of times it comes down to what's cheaper, like because uh, I found that so cheap. Um, Brian Ennis. If you could be any part of Super Sentai, what Super Sentai? Now, both of us have less knowledge of Super Sentai. Uh, both of us have seen almost every season of Power Rangers. I think I've seen more Super Sentai than you, but not much. Oh, only 100 seen... percent more than me. Okay, yeah. I've only seen a couple seasons all the way through, and then a smattering of episodes in a movie or two. <laughs> but you know what? I know my answer. I know what you're going with. Can I call shot it? Yeah. A keeper red. Yeah, a keeper red. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Yeah, I, Joe Steele. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's unofficial. It's a Hikonin Sentai uh, Akiba Ranger. Uh, for those that don't know, it's sort of a parody season, but it's put out by Toei. It's all official. They have, you know, actors from the original shows coming in and stuff, but it's like a delusional collector guy that's like 30 something that like goes into this whole thing and it's all comedy, but like, but it's still, he still gets to morph and he still gets to fight people. And like, if it's that- power ups. And he gets power ups. If that doesn't count, if I couldn't be that, then I would want to be in Tokyo. Um, and if I could pick who I was in Tokyo, I would pick uh, either Nigo, which was blue, or Roku Go, which was orange. Um, I so think for that season, yeah. weren't they numbers instead of colors since they could interchange? Nigo is two, number two. Got it. But, Thank but you. he starts as blue. So I, that's why Nigo is what he's called, but he's blue. Like they all have a base color form, and then he could change into red, but he'd still be number two. No, that's but, why I was asking because I know that, but I yeah. don't know like. Yeah, that's I actually I have a figure, the Japanese figure somewhere over there of um, Ichigo, which is the red one. But you could turn the number, so theoretically, I have the whole team it's in that so, one figure. It's so funny because I have the blue and green and wanted the red, and you only have the red. And I, if I only got one of the three that were available, I would have got blue because he was blue and orange were my two favorites. And actually, going back to who I'd be. Orange is who I want to be. Blue is who I think I am. You know what I mean? Orange is. But you didn't answer the question. What's your Sentai? See, I don't know enough. So that's my problem. If I had to guess. Well, I don't know enough the, either. But Off the top of my head. Bruh. So full transparency. I've seen a little bit of Die Ranger. Yep. I've seen about half of season one of Akiba Ranger. I've seen a GoGo -Go 5 movie. And Zoo I Ranger. saw. Seen Zoo Ranger. I haven't really seen that much of Zoo Ranger. She knows Zoo Ranger? Not real. Maybe an episode. I don't know. Okay. Because when I watched it with you, you were already on Die Ranger. That's so that's true. why that's yeah. what I watched. And then uh, I watched the full um, Super Mega Battle, essentially. I'm trying to think of the full name, but it was. Oh, the Gokaiger version, though. Yeah, but what was before? Go Sager. Go Sager uh, and Go Kaiger crossover movie. Um, I've not seen that. Uh, it's super good. 
I'm sure, but I want to watch those seasons before I watch the Oh, movie. I know. It was so awesome, though. Like, I watched it at, right before the American one was coming out, and I'm like, oh, yeah, this is just great. Um, Gosh, this is really hard. Just because, like, I feel fake being like, well, I like this season and these powers and stuff. Like, it's hard for me to answer because I don't know that many. Ca- All right, here we go. I'm going to be uh, – this is a cop-out answer. I'm going to be um, – I can't keep a yellow. his name. No, the gold guy from that GoGo Five movie that they never made a figure of. Oh, like the seventh ranger or tenth, whatever the extra ranger that was only in the movie. Yeah, because he was like a alien dude who had to be avenged and then avenge somebody. I don't know. I'm going with that. I <laughs> I'm sorry. This was a horrible question for me. <laughs> well, you did your best. Uh, it is funny though, like like how much like there's the Super Sentai fandom and then there's a the Power Ranger fandom. And they're very, very close. And a lot of people watch both of them. But there are some Super Sentai fans that really don't know Power Rangers and vice versa. Yeah. And I'm certainly not someone who dislikes Super Sentai, but I've just seen way more Power Rangers than Super Sentai. Yeah. Um, and, and yeah, and I've seen a fair amount of Ultraman and almost no Kamen Rider. I, I, I know the most about the very first season of Kamen Rider and a little bit of x But like it's that thing of like there's only so many hours in the day and like. I don't know. <laughs> I All right. I changed my answer. I know which uh, which Sentai character I would be. Who? Do Pida Man. Does that count as Sentai though? Yes, it does. It does. It technically but, counts. Doesn't Sentai mean team? I'm pretty sure Sentai means team or squad. It's a tokusatsu show, but is it a Sentai show? So here's the thing, and take this with a giant grain of salt, Gazbot and everyone. I <laughs> saw a little like uh I don't think it, it was either Reddit or uh not Pinterest. What was the one that was a big blog? that nobody really uses anymore. Um, Tumblr? Tumblr, thank you. Yeah. It was a, a Tumblr post where it was like, so Sue Pideman teamed up with um, Jack. Jack whatever, Thank you. Whatever one of those early seasons was with Jack. And that had some tie-in yeah, with Marvel Comics, and then that technically makes it like – a Power Ranger Sentai thing. That doesn't make it a Sentai. Sentai means team or squad. But anyway, we don't have time to argue about it this counts. because Mr. Jeffrey Dolan is returning right now. Hello, sir. Boom, you're back. Hey. I'm back. So, we did it. Derek, <laughs> yeah. And sorry about that, guys. No worries. That's, that's all right. Thank you for uh, persevering. I many know. many <laughs> a lesser man would have just said, forget it. We're done with this. We're out of here. Technology. <laughs> <laughs> we we're saying of all the reasons to you know have technical di- difficulties taking the power rangers audition from your vehicle is definitely you know top of the list that gets yeah. the the pass <laughs> in our book if anything right yeah, yeah it's <laughs> not exactly i overslept or something <laughs> yeah saving a bunch of people doing a power Rangers audition both close and <laughs> tier very very no. similar uh, all right. Well, let's see. Let's get back on track here with uh, Mr. what I might do, actually, because this is live right now. But w- when we're done, I might cut this together and have a recorded version without all our chit chat in between. So it'll make a little more sense. for people. Um, so let's let's go back to the beginning. You kind of introduced yourself already. One of yeah. the questions that I didn't see you asked on the Morphe Network, uh, at least, although it seems like a question you probably get asked a lot, but I- I'm interested, is how did you get into acting? Because I feel like I've talked to a lot of different actors, and they all kind of have a different story of what got them there. Uh, and so sure. I'd be interested to hear yours. Sure. So, I mean, I, I always did it through my school days and stuff. I was always in school productions and bits and pieces. But I, I was more um, along the trail of becoming um, – a, a sportsman, a, a rugby, a rugby player, an All Black. Uh, oh, I don't know oh nice! Know. Yeah, so I was, I was, a, I was a pretty good athlete in my day. Yeah, obviously, uh, haven't let that hang around long. Um, but um, yeah, and so I was doing the rugby thing and the sports thing, and still dabbling and doing local theatre and bits and pieces. Um, then I played against a few of these guys that were All Blacks, and all I. <laughs> Um, hey, yeah, maybe not. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, so it didn't stop me playing, but it just made me refocus. And then I was working. I was, uh, I'd been, been a bank teller for a wee while. And then I was working for a Cadbury chocolate company. Mm, I love Cadbury. Uh, yeah, no, I don't anymore. Well, that's I was going to say, did <laughs> that's an easy way to get you off it, right? I used to work at a movie theater. I didn't eat popcorn for years afterwards. Yeah. So right. I know what you mean. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but while, while I was there, a friend of mine who was doing a show with said, got in touch and said, look, um, they're doing this uh, play in town at the at the professional theatre. 
Um, and uh, you go, it's, it's it's a New Zealand play. It's about rugby. Oh. Um, and it was very, very. It was a huge production. It was a very well known show here. Um, it was called Forston's Lament, which um, it, it sounds unusual to international people, I know, but um, Forskin was the nickname of one of the characters in the show. Um, gotcha. So okay. New Zealand's news, and especially rugby, have a very uh, um, uh, a strong penchant for uh, giving uh, everyone nicknames that uh, um, are oh, maybe as it were slightly obscene or wrong. So uh, yeah, right. so that was. There you go. I was I was playing I played a character called Mean and he was called Mean because he was actually a really nice guy and the guy <laughs> was actually the really na nasty guy he was called Clean so it's uh, yeah, it's just New Zealand's way of m messing with you right. um, and basically I, I I went to she gave me the number of a guy um, who was a professor of drama at the local university to call because he was directing the show so I rang him and talked to him for a while and stuff and he was. Talking away, his name, he was Welsh, so he had this lovely Welsh accent going on, you know, and talking to me all like this. And, and um, yeah, but he just seemed fairly uninspired because I hadn't done anything. I had, I'd done some school shows and stuff. Right. And he said to me at one point, he says, Do you know anything about rugby? And, <laughs> and I said, Rugby, yeah. He says, I said, um, uh, I, I play rugby. And he says, Oh, you mean, you, what do you mean you play it? I said, Well, I, I'm, a, I'm a senior first rugby player, which is it's the highest level you can play in the city. And um, and um, also a rep rugby player, age grade rep rugby player, and all of a sudden his tone changed <laughs> because he had this person who wanted to act but actually knew about rugby too. Right. Yeah, that's an unusual combo, probably. Yeah. yeah. So um, so it sort of transpired. Long story short, he put me in touch with the guy that was going to direct it. Mm -hmm. When I rang him and told him I played rugby, he couldn't have given two hoots, and uh, <laughs> and he just oh, just send me your CV and your photograph, which totally disillusioned me, and I never did. Here's the good bit. Some months later, my old high school leading lady from shows I'd done rang my work and left a message for me to call her urgently. I called her. It just transpires that she was in a drama class with said first person I rang who oh. was saying, you know, this guy had called and they can't find him for the, for the audition for the show. And she said, what's his name? And he said, Jeffrey Dolan. And she goes, I know Jeffrey Dolan. And so she said, ring downstage, the, the theatre, immediately. Uh, which I did. I went in the next day, auditioned for the for the director, and the next day I was cast. That's awesome. So it was a, a real a real and and things like that kept happening to me in the early days. So I wasn't sure whether it's what I wanted to do. <clears throat> Out of that show, some other other older actors took me up to another theater up uh, further up the island to introduce me to their friend who was the director there. We went to the theater to do an audition. He wasn't there. Turns out he was playing indoor cricket. Uh, <laughs> At a local bloody sports stadium, so we went down there. I sat with them for ten minutes and talked, right. and then went, "Okay, cool, and see you later." And we went away. Went away to Auckland for two months. Left my flat, came back to Wellington, was working for about a month. Went back to my old flat after three months of not being there to pick up some of my stuff I'd left behind. The phone rings. I pick it up, and, and it's the director from this other theatre up the road going, "Hi, do you want to be in our play?" And I went, <laughs> "How many times have you rung this number?" And he said, "Oh, this is the first time." Wow. Jeez, if ever there was a sign. Yeah, exactly right. <laughs> so I just went, yeah, someone's telling me this is what I'm supposed to be doing. So, um, yeah, so wow. on, I haven't done anything else. So, yeah. That's, that's, I'm really glad I asked. That's a, that's a great story. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, yeah, pretty much it's just stumbled along. Started eight years, nine years of nonstop around the country professional theater doing right. what they call back to back. So you'd rehearse the show during the day. And then you'd put it on, and then the following Monday, once that show was on at night, you'd start rehearsing the next show during the day. Now, how, I've heard of that before. How do you keep it straight? Like, because I feel like it's hard enough to memorize one play and everything you have to do, but like two yeah. at the same time. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's just part of the. It was part of the uh, system here and part of the training, and you just got very used to it. And I did that, for, as I say, uh, pretty much eight or, <clears throat> eight or nine years nonstop. So, yeah, and you'd, quite often you wouldn't, you'd get. You'd close the show on the Saturday night. You'd dress rehearse the following Friday night. You'd tech, you'd, you'd tech all week, so you'd have you'd have Sunday off. Right. Ten o'clock on Monday, you'd be in the theatre starting the technical rehearsals, which were really long. They were right. ten to ten at night with lights and sound and costume, etc. You'd do your first dress rehearsal maybe the Thursday or the Friday, and then you'd open again the following Saturday. And that was just nonstop. So yeah, I guess though it's sort of like going to boot camp. You do that for a few years. Any other acting job's got to be a cakewalk. Right, yeah, it, it gave great grounding and characterization of focus of 
being able to watch so many other actors because you're on stage generally with anything from six to 20 other actors. You get right. to meet a whole variety of talent and, and characterization and, and uh, yes, yeah, so it gives you great grounding. So, um, and, and that again helps with uh, the, the things like doing voice acting and stuff to, to create different characters, um, as does the improvisation stuff I do, the whose line is it anyway style of, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a highly experienced uh, theater sports uh, improviser. That's uh, awesome. keep from Canada. So that sort of stuff too is giving great grounding for creating characters, creating voices on the spot or, or w w once you're working with directors and producers to develop them. Right, yeah, especially I can imagine that happening in the in the voice booth too. If they're like, "Give us another take" or "Try this," you're you're ready to go because yeah, that's awesome. It, it also it's just quite coincidental that the two the two people I've worked with predominantly over the last 10, 15 years in, in the in the recording studio, uh, Jim McClarty, who's been the pred predominant uh, uh, um, voice director in our studios, and then uh, Laurie Dungey, uh, who has now taken over from Jim, but Jim's still heavily involved. Uh, right. They are both um, uh, improvising and uh, theatre sports colleagues of mine. So we can work really quickly and closely together. And right. I understand them really quickly when they're telling me, hey, you want to try that? Imagine this. And I, and I, I, I know what they're talking about and can get right. into it. Very quickly. Leave that shorthand and comment yeah. out. That's great. Yeah. 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 So, so have you found with the theatre experience, especially doing that kind of unique take on that, that that helped you just become that much more efficient in the voice booth? Yeah. Um, I, I'd say... I'd say the improvisation side of things was was probably more helpful with that because it, it allowed me to think on my feet a lot quicker. Um, the, the 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 stage work definitely gave me that real grounding in character um, and, and 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 being strong in that character. Uh, how to project that character? How to how to how to um, think about the limited information we do get and what that tells me about the sort of person as such the character is. Um, where their weaknesses are, their strengths are, what people say about them, what they say about themselves, all that sort of stuff, that sort of various acting techniques that you learn to really embody your characters more fully. So the stage stuff helps there. The improvisation stuff helps with on-the-spot stuff in the studio. And then, of course, the experience of being in there, you know, at first we were all a bit goofy and a bit starstruck <laughs> about what we're doing in front of this microphone, you know? Yeah. <laughs> How far away do I stand? And, oh, what do I? Um, <laughs> Whereas now you just walk in and whack on the cans and you know you can even arrange your own microphone and go for it and yeah and and, and it all works very very smoothly now. That's one awesome. thing for your characters. Is there any character Power Ranger related that you felt was just like easy? You maybe one taked it on how you were going to portray that character going forward, or some that maybe you had a little bit harder time getting. Yeah, I think yeah, kind of I the think, feel for uh, Korag was a really easy one. Korag just was it just clicked and. Yeah, it was a good description. That the 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 image that I did see just was such a strong image. Um, it enabled me to really get into that really quickly. Gose was another one, sort of flipped the other side, where it was a really nice treat to go from being this evil, you know, dastardly character to having this. The, 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 I can't remember if the instruction or the character description was exactly this, but it kind of came across to me as Californian surfer, and. Um, and so they just wanted them to be that sort of laid back, cool, un unshakable um, uh, um, uh, mentor. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, so that sort of, and it was great fun to also be able to, um, yeah, there's the boy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, play a character where it didn't ruin my voice every time I went to the studio. <laughs> Corey, yeah, I can imagine that for sure. There was a beast on the vocal cords, Corey, I can tell you. Um, we have a question uh, somebody sent us when they knew you were going to be on that isn't here now. Uh, Matt Kendall Clear wanted to know, um, how did you get the on-screen appearance, this is Power Rangers again, of uh, the race official in the Ninja Storm finale? Uh, any interesting stories with any of how you actually were, because you actually, in that one, you actually got to film with the main cast and you were on the set. So I guess they yeah. just want to know how that happened and, and what your experience was. The race, the race official, how long ago is this? Which, which was uh, This would have been probably the early. first one we did. Uh, with <laughs> the, one so, yeah, we, yeah, so that was. I mean, I would have auditioned. Um, many, we're talking twenty years ago, nearly. Right. Yeah, I would. Have, I would have auditioned through, and and and, and again, it's just, as with any audition, it is um, the directors, producers watch, and they say that's the right look for what we want, and and the accent's good, and um, and let's go for it. So yeah, it's there's there's certainly wasn't any casting couch involved or uh, <laughs> um, yeah any special favors done because that yeah, in a long way from here to LA so yeah 
And that, um, was your, that was your first um, spot on Power Rangers was doing yeah. face acting as, as opposed to voice. Yeah. Which, it's funny because yeah. from we've talked to a few voice actors and it seems like more usually they do the voice first and then maybe they get a chance to be on set. But you kind of went the other way, it seems. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not sure because it, it, it's in the earlier days, like uh, the, there was more Americans cast uh, in the main roles and it was easy to bring people in and out. Right. Um, and Lord of the Rings had made that very easy to do and the previous stuff. And uh, we had had um, Xena and Hercules, of course. And so they, they, they would predominantly bring you, in. You were on Xena a little bit? Yeah, I did one episode of Xena. I did about four or five of, of Hercules. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm still, in, still in touch with Kevin Sorbo. And, uh, and uh, yeah, we used to play golf together a lot when he was over here and when he'd visit. Oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, so we, we'd sort of become used to them importing the, the main talent. But then they sort of just started loosening up of it. So, yeah, just the opportunity for locals to be used. And then, of course, quite a few locals then ended up getting cast as Rangers themselves, which was great. You know, poor River, rest of soul, um, and, and the likes uh, moving forward. So, and, and the likes of Katrina and stuff being used as sort of the uh, the, the arch characters. So, yeah. Um, well, actually, another question I had is because uh, you do an American accent as well. Yeah. Uh, yep. Was that something you got in, in theater or did you specifically train for that so that you could do American shows or how, how did that come about? Yeah, no, we, cause we, a lot of the shows we, we did over those years were American shows. So we uh, became very comfortable with the, with the American accent. Um, and w when you're doing an American accent for a New Zealand audience, they don't really have a concept of whether you're doing the vowels properly or whether you're doing it the right, right. Um, even the right state, you know, but you know, we, we, we did shows, not that I was in it, but things like, um, um, what's the one I'm thinking of? Set out of uh, steel magnolias, you know, and oh, so oh, gotcha. really specific sort of accent. And man, the girls that did that just that fantastic sort of they really did their study into that whole Louisiana accent. Um, the majority of the shows you do, they tend to just keep it as sort of neutral American. We call it neutral American, Californian American. Right. Um, and but I've certainly I've done I've just finished I've just done a movie uh, over here that, um, that they're filming that's based in Texas, so okay. we had to do the Texan accent. I've done New York accents for a long time. So, what's your, what's your favorite uh, American accent to do? I love doing the New York thing, you know. So, uh, yeah, um, they just, just slip under there. But when, when you're doing when you're doing Rangers, they don't want that. <laughs> no, probably not. Although that would be kind of cool. Like, if, yo, what are you doing? I'm the Green Ranger over here. <laughs> you just not want to play it, okay? Just leave me alone, will you? Oh, <laughs> All right, we got to we got to talk to Hasbro. We got a new Ranger, Jeffrey Dolan. <laughs> yeah. yeah, well, I've already got. To, uh, see, I've already got. With the, we were talking before, Big Dog. You got the Ford, so I got the Ford Ranger Wild Track, right? And the, mm -hmm. um, the big black one. It's got all that bloody. I've had it boot kitted out a bit. And I don't know if you've seen. Uh, someone liked it on my um, um, my fan page. I've, I've got a photograph up there of it. And so it's called the Black Ranger or the the, the Four Ranger because I saw that on your Facebook yeah. fan page. Yeah. That yeah. 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 And you were saying it, it, it's for Power Rangers, but also for uh, Thor. Oh, well, yeah. let's talk about Thor because probably yeah. most of our viewers don't know what, what that is. I, I've i done my research, so I do. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's a New Zealand production called The Almighty Johnsons. Um, and it's based on the premise of four brothers uh, being descended from the Norse gods that went, when, when the uh, gods escaped Asgard after the war with the humans, that they escaped to the various places around the world centuries ago. And a whole pile of them found their way to New Zealand. And the four brothers, uh, the reincarnation over the years of one of, one of the gods, um, Loki is there, um, um, Balder, uh, Bragi, and of course the main character being Odin. Um, and their mission is to find Frigg, um, Odin's wife, uh, to get them back together. And to uh, uh, yeah, there we go. There's and there's okay. me as Eric, the, the goat, uh, the goat farmer, who is the incarnation of Thor. And uh, Thor doesn't like uh, Johnny Lee on the left there. Um, he doesn't, he's a giant, although he's not a very big giant. Um, <laughs> he's just a reincarnation of one. And Odin in the middle there uh, is, uh, is uh, Axel. So he's yeah. the main character. So, yeah, no. so the problem was, yeah, you've got to find, you've got to find Frigg, reconnect the, the two of them, and then we all get our powers back. Having not been able to watch this, um, because it's, I looked on Netflix, it's not on American Netflix. It's not, yeah. it might be available, but uh, maybe you got to buy the DVDs or whatever. I, I couldn't find it quick enough to watch it before we talk to you. Yeah. Um, yeah. so I'm curious why, um, it seems like Odin, who would be the father of Thor seems younger, 
the actor seems younger than you are. So how does that, yeah. how does that explain? Uh, that was going to be my question as well. <laughs> as I say, so the characters are re they're reincarnated. So another another person would have carried the 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 being of of Odin until he passed away, and Odin's essence would have gone back into the atmosphere. And then uh, what happens is, is when um, uh, someone from a godly parentage, so uh, young Axel's three older brothers were all gods, and they knew Axel would become a god, but it doesn't happen until their 21st birthday. They go out to the woods and do the ceremony, and then all of a sudden he is invested with the spirit of a god. They're not sure which one. Mm. And then another character there, which they called Grandpa, who was their um, their mentor, their uh, their seer, and they he tells them which god he is. And so on his 21st birthday, obviously Odin was free, <laughs> invested him, and he became Odin. So he became the leader of them. Um, gotcha. Even though he still had to listen to his older brothers on certain elements, he could also turn around and go, hey, I'm Odin. I'm doing this. And they would go, fair enough. Uh I didn't yeah. make this. I saw somebody else did it. I thought it was pretty funny. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> Thor Dark World. Because yeah. actually you're talking about where you just use a regular hammer as yeah. Thor. Like, you know, there's yeah. no meal in there. I think that's hysterical. Like, I, I, I got to find a way to watch this show. And I looked because uh, I saw you could you on, um, on your um, sci-fi channel. I, uh, maybe. I, I, yeah. I don't have regular cable anymore, personally. Oh, I know. Big dog. Have you seen it on sci-fi? I have yeah. not. No, sci-fi is another one that... Uh, there's like a handful of networks over here that depending on which, you know, yeah. streaming package yeah. you have, some sure. are bundled in some and not yeah. others. And that one but is well, what I was, was, was on Netflix because when I was in San Francisco uh, late 2019, um, I, it was like another fun story. Um, I was in the foyer of the, uh, of the, the Diva hotel, I think it was called and in San Fran. And I was just, I'd just gotten changed. I was waiting for my Uber to take me to the airport to bring me back to New Zealand. And I was talking to the desk clerk in the bellhop. And after about five minutes, this bellhop turned around and said, excuse me, sir. He says, have you ever been on TV? And I was like, yeah, back home. And he says, we on a show called the Almighty Johnsons. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, how do you know that? And he said, uh, I was watching a, a Thor movie on Netflix. And it, when it finished, it came up with the, you like that? You might want to watch this. And the Almighty Johnsons was under it. And he said, I've watched the series three times. You were awesome. <laughs> That's amazing. that's great, man. Just all he'd done is heard my voice and was going, that voice sounds really familiar. That's fantastic. Yeah, very uh, funny. Well, I, like I said, it's definitely not on Netflix now, unfortunately, because I literally tried to watch it. But what I was going to say is watching the other interview talking to you, I want people at home to know, like, of course, he's going to say it's good and we're going to be nice and say, oh, it sounds good. But I looked on Rotten Tomatoes and it's got like high 80s, low 90s for both the critic score and the viewer score. So. Right. People who've seen it like it, so it's not just we're not, you know. So I'm even more excited to see it now. Yeah, cool. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a bit of a comic drama, so it's a bit of a romp. The boys do stupid stuff. The goddesses are opposed to them finding Frigg, so they're doing everything they can to interfere with the boys' efforts to try and find the goddess Frigg. Right. Um, and so there's lots of funny comic play back and forth on that. There's dark moments. The second series is quite dark. <clears throat> um, <clears throat> excuse me, Dino Gorman, who plays one of the main characters, Bragi. He got cast in the Hobbit movies and oh, had nice. to disappear for the year. And so they had to film him in very isolated moments. Oh, uh, gotcha. The flow of the story. And they were literally, they were going to shut the show down after two seasons, but the fan sort of revolt at the end of that um, got the third season happening, which was uh, quite fun. So, yeah. That's awesome. And, yeah. So I, I just appear in one episode per series when Odin needs some ass kicking done so yeah <laughs> you're the muscle <laughs> yeah that's awesome so a, little, a little bit ass kicking so. well all, the, all that rugby experience has got to come into play there too <laughs> yeah. you know i mean so yeah um big dog you got another question you want to throw out yeah uh, in regards to kind of what you were saying with the, uh, i know it was half a joke with the rugby experience was there any uh acting job that you did have to you know kind of get that deja vu and utilize some of your previous rugby training or footwork or something where you're like, Oh, it's really good. I did that. And then it came in yeah. handy for a shoot. Yeah, yeah definitely. I, I did a movie not long ago, um, a New Zealand movie called the kick. And okay. the kick is based around the, the world cup. Like New Zealand is seen as the pinnacle of world rugby, right? It's the all blacks are fairly internationally known as this amazing foot rugby team. And, and America probably knows a little bit about rugby and how these guys play football without pads and helmets, you know, mm -hmm. and still hit each other as hard. Um, and the All Blacks have been the epitome of world rugby for many, many years. <clears throat> the first Rugby World Cup that was uh, played in 1987, New Zealand won that World Cup. Every four years subsequently, we didn't. Mm. And 
this would this would four yearly cause major heartache to New Zealanders throughout the world um, to the point where if we lost a final or a semi-final there would literally be an economic depression in the country for three months after wow. because wow. people said they would stop going to work their productivity would drop etc cetera, etc cetera. and no, here no, i was thinking because people were losing bets <laughs> yeah yeah but a bit of that but they just their product productivity dropped off they were sad mope around so 2011 came around we hosted the world cup again for the first time uh second time but since 87 and so the press was right on mm -hmm. we win the world cup eight seven eight eight points to seven just an absolutely you know titanic match and the weight of the world was off our shoulders and we party like it's 1999. <laughs> During that process, there was a great sort of a, um, you, you, you'd call it folklore. Um, our, our pivotal player, our first 5'8", was the, the world's best first 5'8". He gets injured partway through the start of it. Our backup first 5'8 comes in. It's like the quarterback position, really. Our backup comes in. In that same match, the following match, he gets injured. Oh, geez. During, during the following two games, the, the, the third backup gets injured and our our reserve halfback, who, who's a bit like, well, he's a bit of a distributor too, but he's sort of you know, more connected to the defensive line. He has to step back into that role and, and play that, that role. Meanwhile, they're trying to get hold of this other character, this other guy who plays the first five role. Mm -hmm. He didn't think he had a chance because he was fourth or fifth string. So he's gone on holiday. Mm. He's in the bush up, upstream fishing <laughs> out of out of communication. After seven days, he comes back and all of a sudden his phone lights up. There's 32 phone calls from the coach of the All Blacks rugby team going, get your ass to camp. We need you. <laughs> he turns up tw not even 20 minutes into the final. The fifth All Black first 5-8 breaks down and he gets put on the field. He hasn't oh, trained. Gosh. He hasn't done anything. The jersey he is wearing doesn't fit. They've got these sort of world, you know, these, these high tech, but he non stretch. He pulls it on, and when he's running around, it's riding up over his tummy because it just keeps pulling up because it doesn't fit him. And, okay. and, and his captain keeps going up to him, going, Pull your friggin' shirt down. You look like a dick. <laughs> he gets the first penalty. He has to kick this penalty, and this has been a major issue for, of his over the years, his kicking ability. That's why he's not the number one choice. He slots the kick, gives us the lead. We win 8-7. They sort of try and say that it was because of him that we won it. He scored the first points. Well, someone else scored a try that got us the eight points, and then everyone held off the last half hour. But he becomes this absolute legend who was upstream fishing. Right. Yeah, with six days notice, comes on and kicks a winning goal in the World, World Cup. Yeah, because so that's a more interesting story than everybody just did their part and tried to Exactly, really right? <laughs> it was fun. You know, for, yeah, yeah. It yeah. Was, was made about his progress and lack of progress and i played the all black assistant coach at the time nice. so my knowledge of uh, steve hansen who then went on to become the world cup coach and won the world cup in, in 2015 as well and so again my, my knowledge of rugby and and that experience with acting combined to create um a, a, a very fun role and a very uh, a, a fun production that's very cool and had to be well, fun for you as such a fan too sorry uh, I said, sorry about the long answer. There's probably a whole lot of Americans sitting there going, what the hell did he just say? <laughs> no, I do like, like, unintentionally just, you know, learning more about you. It started, how you got into acting was you played rugby, and then there was a play about rugby. That There's a through it. line here. And then yeah. it was like, hey, how did that help you? Well, in this movie I was in about rugby, ties it back <laughs> yeah. in without even trying. So that's great, man. I, yeah. I love that kind of thing. And I'll tell you right. something else. Um, I I am not into sports at all. I'm not even into American sports. Yeah, but, not a, he had no uh, idea what you were talking. No, about. No, no, but it doesn't matter. It, no, no, but it doesn't time. matter because I love sports movies. Yeah, right. I, okay. Like any sport movie, I because I love the drama and you get to see the people and stuff. So the part of sports that I like is the parts that you just told me. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like, I don't want to watch a game every week, but if I know that they're down in the dirt and then the guy and the coach is like, "Hey, you," you know, that's the part I like. So I would like that movie. <laughs> like well, I, the Rockies are my favorite movie. movies. I've never watched. Right. It was like a boys' own adventure for me too, because you know, being an All Black is the absolute pinnacle for every Kiwi kid when you're growing up and playing rugby. Mm -hmm. When you don't become one, you sit back and admire those guys. You know, it's like sure. be like the NFL guys. You know, if you want, if you're in the NFL or NHL or NBA, whatever. Um, and so then to get the opportunity to portray one of these guys, and 
sit in their seat for a while, you know, wear their shoes, wear their suit, literally go to the changing rooms where they, they, they fit it out for the final game, go to the training facilities that they used, be clothed by the brands and the, and the, and the sponsors that clothed them. You know, right. they were sponsored by Adidas. Adidas remade all the stuff for us retro style to oh, match. that's so today. cool. Yeah. The big suit manufacturer over here who sponsored their main uh, match suits and stuff for afterwards. They remade all the suits for us to wear in, in, in the movie, you know. So we cool. got to hold the World Cup. You know, it had a the security actual World Cup? It. Yeah, yeah. That's so they bought, they bought it out. They had a security guard with it. It was wrapped in a towel. We weren't allowed to take photos or anything with it. It's that protected. Oh, wow. And it's only allowed to be touched by the winning teams and, and captains of, of, of the winning teams. They, they got permission for us to use the, the, their one. So that was wrapped. We'd, they'd call uh, roll cameras, set. The security guard would take the towel off it and give it to whoever had to hold it. And then we'd go into the chain rooms, do the final scene that we, when we'd won it and we were passing around and drinking out of it. So I got to hold it, drink champagne out of this World Cup. Um, and then as soon as it was cut, the towel would come in and wrap it up so that no one could get a photograph or wow. anything with it. So, yeah. What's funny though is I was thinking, oh, that's a shame you couldn't get a photo. But you have a movie where you're drinking out of it. That's kind of bad. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Literally, that didn't make the cut. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Bonus, bonus, question. bonus features on the DVD. Yeah, maybe didn't make the cut. I don't think so. Yeah. So yeah. it's uh, yeah. everyone else has got it, but I didn't quite make the cut myself. So yeah. But yeah. I know it. <laughs> you know you exactly. Today, you, you lived it. The next best thing. Yeah. Out of all the retro gear that you uh, ha that they had made for that movie, did you get to keep any or no? Like any no. of the ah? Oh. No, no, oh, that's that was a all shame. We were under such strict um, rules on that we weren't allowed to uh, even take photos, uh, selfies, or anything during production because uh, it was such a secret uh, production. They didn't want any uh, info getting out about who was playing what and what was going on. So I got to, I literally put a photograph up of me and three guys sitting in the stands. I think we might have been wearing costume but it wasn't any specific sort of costume we were there watching a game so we're pretty neutral and i did a selfie of the three of us as the characters and just went uh here's me at work you know didn't say anything didn't mention it. <laughs> there it was the next morning i had the producer online to me saying take that down right now or we'll have oh. you for breaching so oh like, <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I, I feel like that kind of level of pressure, though, did it make it a little bit more surreal for you where you're like, I can't even, you know, in a plain T-shirt, sit in the stands and tell everybody this project is just yeah, yeah. so impactful. Yeah, it made me squirm a little bit because I just went, there's nothing wrong with what I did. There was nothing wrong with the image. It didn't give away anything. Um, but they, I, I suppose they just didn't want the, um, oh, there's Ryan. Hey, Ryan. Um uh, yeah, just they didn't want anything sort of leaked, so that they kind of preempted their marketing and stuff. So I see, I see it from that point of view. I also, I also yeah. found it a little bit petty, but but yeah, uh, but with the World Cup and stuff, I can understand that because you know that's it's a um, yeah, it's a special trophy, and, and there are like the the football World Cup, the, the FIFA World Cup, you know, same thing. You know, only the captains and the players of the team and officials that win it can touch it. So um, you know, it's uh, to, to be given that privilege was. Yeah, very humbling, but also like, oh, I would have loved a photo. But never mind. <laughs> that's that's awesome. And again, I, I can appreciate the specialness, even though I'm not a fan of rugby. I get it. I absolutely yeah. get it. Yeah. Um, speaking of Ryan, uh, from the Morphin yeah. Network, uh, yeah. they yeah. they want to know Daishi or Korag. Uh, Korag all the way. Sorry, yeah, I yeah. Know I, 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 I think most people would agree. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm a big Jungle Fury fan, so uh, Daishi is from Jungle Fury, so you would think yeah. I would pick that, but I do acknowledge that Korag is probably the more interesting of the two roles you did, at least. Yeah, it was great fun for me to do, too. I was very disappointed that I didn't go on to become the uh, the, the human form. Um, I, Actually, I, I, that, that was a question I was going to ask that I don't think they asked you. Um, when you did Daishi, you only did the like the demon form or the monster form, whatever you want to call it. Did you watch at all um, I, I, the name of the actors escaping who played the human form? Did you see how he did it to try to? No, no not at all. No, Would no, you have wanted to, or you didn't want to be influenced? We, we, we weren't even aware of it. Oh, so, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, we, I got the cut, got the part, got the, got the scripts. That was it. I wasn't really told that there was a human form forthcoming uh -huh. or anything being. So, yeah. No. Oh, that's funny. And that's funny because. Uh, the the monster came kind of after like we saw yeah. mo like the, the last few episodes so they must have intentionally not because they didn't want you to maybe be the same as what he yeah, did or something quite possibly, yeah quite possibly although there may have been a presumption that we had some awareness of, of it but you know with it within the yeah i don't think there would be because we 
you know, the production takes you know, nine months to edit and put together at least before it goes to air. So, you know, we wouldn't have even been able to watch anything even if it was on air. So. Yeah, I it would have to be the kind of thing where you'd sit down with the other actor, and that's so, so hard to. Yeah, it probably is better that way because it's supposed to be two different characters. Like the the yeah. other version is like the possessed guy, not the yeah. yeah. So, yeah. Um, I, I don't know. I'll ask this this is from one of our viewers. Um, yeah. I don't know if you'll be able to do it, but it says if you have to be any, if you could be, I think they mean to say, if you could be any Power Rangers villain, who would you be? Which might, as you said, be difficult since you haven't watched a lot of Power Rangers. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. Um, um, is there any? Yeah, are you even aware of any Ranger villains that you haven't played that you would? Not hugely, no, no, because as I say, I just have never watched the show because it's just never been accessible for us. Right. Um, it possibly has been online, but I'm not a big streaming person, and it's, yeah, you know, let's be honest, yeah, you know, I'm 56. It's not my demographic. Right. Um, well, I think it's also a thing too where, um, it, even if it was started being available, let's say 10 years ago, which is what I heard. Um, yeah. That's and, and you know we're all Ranger fans here, so I'm not putting it down. But the heyday was the '90s. That's when everyone fell in love with it. Yeah, so cool. coming on now, I've heard similar stories where in China, Star Wars isn't that popular because it right. wasn't there in the '70s and '80s, and they got it later. And they're like, "What's the big deal?" Yeah. And I feel like maybe that's how it is with New Zealand. Like, okay, it's fine, but they didn't have the love affair that other countries did with it. Yeah, no, we we had it in those days. We we it literally got banned from screen TV. Oh, so you had it, and then it left. Yeah, yeah. Oh, again, wow. I forget, I forget yeah. when, but yeah, I remember hearing that it was banned there. For yeah. you know, a reason or I, I thought you never had all that. the violence in the playgrounds, and so they banned it, and it never, never came back in. And so, right. it, it, as I say, when it came back, it might have been 2010. It right. might have come back to the streaming channels through Disney um, gotcha. and other um, and Nickelodeon. Uh, but you certainly didn't make our mainstream uh, channels uh, right. free. You know. I, I kind of love that, though, that basically your country is saying, hey, look, we'll make this stuff and poison other people's kids, but not our kids. We'll take your yeah. money. Yeah. <laughs> now, when we, that, was the, that was the trick of the day for those guys, too. That they would, The producers then would, would travel different countries every year. They'd go and make a new deal and go to countries to get new scenery, whatever. Um, but then they went to New Zealand and went, why would we move again? So it's been quite nice that they've stayed for you know, nearly 20 years and it's yeah. certainly been a bonus for us you know economy wise and and income wise and and experience wise for, with, with the international market so yeah absolutely well, well let me ask you this um you you say you have you been able to watch any of your performances even uh like like oh. you were on beast morphers as the janitor right and that yeah. one do have you even yeah. seen that no. <laughs> i can put it on for you right now if you'd like to see it sure yeah 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 I just happen to have it because that is on Netflix, unlike the uh, the Mighty Johnsons. <laughs> let me see. Let me turn. Uh, I, actually, you don't have any dialogue, I don't think. But I'll put the sound. No, All yeah, right. There we go. Yeah. That's you. Yeah. Moonwalk. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Oops. What, what do I do? Oh no, everything looks all right. Yeah, nothing wrong here. Here I go again. Yeah. I love the antenna yeah. on the yeah. on the yeah. headphones. Yeah, yeah. from nineteen seventy three. Yeah, he's he's old class. Yeah, he yeah. just did a, a force field, but there's still the antenna coming out. Yeah. <laughs> he's got no idea what he's done. He's just living the dream. Did they tell the did they tell you to dance or was that your own thing? Well, that was what they wanted. Yeah, that was I had to I had to audition and do all that too. Oh, really? Yeah. They had to see yeah. you do a a, a for lack of a better term, a goofy dance. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was actually in Christchurch um, or did, uh, rehearsing for another production um, of a show. And it was – so it's literally this time two years ago I did that because um, I don't know if you heard about the uh, terror attack over here that um, when the, the gunman, lone gunman, went around and shot 51 people in uh, two Muslim mosques in Christchurch. Oh. Um, was, yeah. I was in Christchurch uh, rehearsing for a play. It ended up getting cancelled because of that uh, incident happening. It only happened about 500 metres down the road from where we were rehearsing. We, we got locked down for seven hours. Um, so, yeah, I did the audition uh, very early days. I actually did that in the audition space of um, the court theatre. And then they said yes, and I flew up during that time to go and film it. So, um, yeah, so it was yeah, two years ago around now. That's so, and for us, that was not that long ago that we just saw it, like a couple months ago, it feels like. Okay, so the next time, okay. Uh, related, um, not to the shooting, but to the the, the dancing scene. Yes. There was there was an episode in Beast Morphers where they showed older villains on a screen, and they had, and Korag was one of them. And is it true that you did Korag again for those scenes? Yeah, I had to go back and revoice. Um, so um, 
yeah, they just played down what they had. But and I don't know why it was whether it was old technology and they, they couldn't quite get the, the sound quality they wanted, mm -hmm. or whether there's some sort of corruption in what they had originally. So yes, yeah, so I, I I went back in during last year. Oh, we late, late the previous year and re-recorded those lines. Well, and that was that wasn't uh, like a two for one. Like, hey, you're doing the janitor. You might as well do this. It was like two separate complete jobs. Yeah, you separate. I was, I, I was back in Auckland when that happened, and then oh wow, getting towards the end of the year, they sort of my, realized they could clean it up. My understanding for that was so much of the original dialogue from Power Rangers had music in the background that was copywritten, and I don't uh, think Hasbro has the rights for that, so they right. couldn't dilute it. So mm, you yeah. either had to use it with nothing or shoot new foot new oh, audio is my understanding of the i've heard the that too did you yeah did you have a hard time finding the korag voice after having not done it for so many years and having not seen it either like no no they luckily they could play the play the uh the tape back for me and so they, when they played it for you you just kind of were able to get back into it i could have heard it and just yeah korag well, tonight yeah just yeah i've always had that thing when i get just as a I'm the Night Wolf, Korag. I'm here to kill you, Power Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, we're smiling like idiots. You're like, this is terrible things I'm saying. We're like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll destroy you. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Come on, bring it. Yeah. So, oh, yes, there you go. Yes. Yeah, I forgot I'll throw in some Korag in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. There he is. That was a good oh, entrance. So good. Yeah, he, I, I've like, seen bits of Korag. Uh, Gaz has not yet. I so, watched uh, the Beast Morphers. It's the only place. I, I'm much more familiar with your Gose character than your Korag oh, character. Yeah. Right, yeah, but, but I both, love this suit. It was great fun to do too, from the perspective of it. It gave me more long, longevity and work because it was the first character to actually go through two seasons. Right. Um, oh, yeah. Go say you mean? Go say yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. Real, that end, yeah. Well, so uh, sorry. The other thing, oh, actually, Big Dog, you got I've been monopolizing. You got a question you want to throw out? Yeah, it was a uh, semi-location based. I know we were talking about different places with um, different obviously ranger conventions in the states i don't know if those are some that once they open up you plan on going to but is there anywhere in particular you'd love to visit in the states that you haven't yet that um, you know is yeah. on the list yeah I, i'm not so just if you if you throw it if you because i'm not sure where the ranger conventions are so florida throw, uh so and california are the two big ones yeah right i've got a friend in florida that i love to go and visit he runs a golf resort so you know, combining those two things would be great yeah um, perfect just, Te texas to, has it a little bit too just to be cool. I've never been to Texas. Um, I've done um, I've done Memphis, Tennessee, but I'd love to do Kentucky or something like that. And uh, um, uh, and certainly would would love to go to New Orleans. Um, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. But um, but yeah, it's it, yeah. That I mean, I'm happy to go wherever the opportunity arises. And 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 because sure. this is a whole phenomenon that we're just not. Um, we we have experience of it through Power Rain, uh, through uh, Lord of the Rings and stuff. A lot of the guys going away. And doing stuff and Xena and Hercules sort of kicked that off as well. The, right. the fan can for those. Um, but our awareness of how big Power Rangers is is just is we've only just come to realize it now. So yeah. Yeah, and it's had a reason. It's I mean, it was huge in the nineties and it stuck around for a while. And I, I would say like, I don't know what do you think, big though, like five years ago it had like an extra big resurgence. Yeah, I feel like when they did the big anniversary right. season where you know all the different suits were coming back, which that's was your when it season, started. I guess, hey. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, you were part of the season that brought everybody's attention back. Yeah. Yeah, yeah cuz they had all the other former former uh, Rangers around the world. Yes, yeah, and they brought back all, all the old actors, well not all the old actors, many of the yeah. old actors and yeah. So, yeah, that's yeah, and right cuz it never went away, but definitely I think a lot of people myself included around that time was like, "Oh yeah, Power Rangers." That's yeah, awesome. Yeah. You know, and like kind of remembered and you know, got back to it again. Well, I'm definitely interested in, in, in doing um, you know, conventions. That'd be great, just as a, as an experience. Uh, yeah, you go, Tensa. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, and, how do you know Tensu if you haven't seen it? Because he, well, because he was in scenes with me during during recording. So, I oh, but so, oh, so I got gotcha. you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so, you, so I would be watching this this clip, voicing to it. Gotcha. Okay. We're the now the voice of Tensu would, would that actor. Sorry. We we would see the clip of the scene we're involved with, and would so you, we could. Acting and, with the other actor with with Tensu's actor, yeah, no. So he would be pre-recorded, or it'd be a guide track. Gotcha. So they have the scene that they have the actors with their guide tracks. So it's quite often these guys were re-recorded as well, and yeah. I would just yeah, you, know, you get because you know you've got especially with, with, when you're doing scenes with the action characters um, that you have a certain amount of time to get your line into because they, they're responding to this blinking head <laughs> on the wall. So um, and and there'd be someone reading his lines to them. So I have to 
while doing the, uh, the the character as such, also think I've got 15 seconds to squeeze this line in. So, yeah. Well, did a good job. <laughs> yeah. And you also did the, uh, uh, from what I understand, you did the voice for the toys as well. Is that, that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for, for, that was for um, for Gose, yeah. So, yeah. so like, uh, originally the character was cast in America. Are you like, all right, you've got one. Okay. So, so is this, like, I'm going to play it. This is you. Nope, doesn't say anything. I gotta I put a card. A in. card yeah. I gotta put um, a card. I'll put yeah. a Mystic Force card since you did Mystic yeah. Force too. Here we go. You heard that? Yeah. That's you, right? Be sure it is. Yeah. That's crazy. <laughs> well, because usually the person who's in the movie or the show they get a sound alike or someone different to, to do yeah. the, the, the toy. So it's, it, I was impressed that they had you do both. That seems like not. So, uh, what happened was they had another actor lined up to do it and they had a falling out. And so mm -hmm. um, very last minute I got recast. Mm -hmm. I, I had a mission for it. Um, and I, all of a sudden it was just for Christmas. I remember I got this phone call saying, are you available? And can you come in tomorrow? And yep. And so I came in and sort of asked what's going on. They said, Oh yeah, here's a situation. I was like, Whoa. Um, does it mean? And they went, yeah, you're going to be doing the character from now on. But first job was I had to do these pages of red, red. mystic, force, power rangers. And these were, just had to record them as individuals because they would then tie them together depending on what the response required in the, in the handset. Right. Yeah. Yellow <laughs> ranger. <laughs> How long did that take, that, that session of just saying the random words? We were, we were probably in there. That's probably the longest session I had to do, actually. Wow. <laughs> this was so, um, we were probably in there a couple of hours, whereas the rest of Gose's stuff, compared to Korag, uh, the right. rest of Gose's stuff, I think the longest I was in there was maybe 45 minutes. Um, and because it, you know, it's, it's the Rangers that are the, the key characters, and so you, you have, you're supplying the subtext and, and you know, information and motivation and, sure. and instruction and order. Um, and search your power card. And yeah, so um, that, that that's only limited within the story. So even with Korag, he had fairly limited dialogue and it was turning up basically telling him, I'm going to kick your ass and let's go for it. And then the rest of the time, you'd probably have, I, I might only have like 12 sort of dialogue cues. And then for the rest of it, I would have, and we would get those done first because the rest of it would kill my voice. And we'd, yeah. Do, yeah. we'd do three hours of, fight action noises so doing <laughs> three hours just strips your voice so um yeah we had a minimum we had a max well, no minimum call that we were paid for of uh four hours and with Corey, i was in there for four hours every time and doing one or two three episodes uh go say as i say i was in there for 45 minutes and still got my four hours so it was, that was, that was the thing they, they front loaded it so you had Corag, and they're like you know what <laughs> Go yeah. say we're going to give you a little bit more time. A little bit of payback. It was like, yeah, thank you very much. So, yeah. uh, well, that that kind of dovetails into a question. Another question we had from Matt Kendall, Claire viewer, uh, says uh, you voice a lot of notable villains such as Korag, Omni, uh, yeah. uh, Dai Shi, etc. Do you purposely go for the villain auditions, or were, was that just a, a coincidence, happy accident that they're mostly villains? It's, it's because the majority of of. Uh, um, you know, all of voiceover characters tend to be the villainous characters. Mm -hmm. um, Gose was a bit of a unique one because Gose was usually played by a mentor at the high school or or right. a, yeah, sort of their life character um, uh, previously. Um, and so then you got the Gose and Tensu sort of, there was a bit of a, a step back. Um, well, not a step back, but it was a, a change. A yeah. change of well, it was because um, I think they were trying to echo what they had in the very first season with Zordon yeah. and Alpha 5. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 yeah. And I didn't even realize the connection to Zordon. So it was like, what? Because people started asking me about it. Zordon. I was like, well, no I think you're, you, not you, but I think your character was like essentially his apprentice, is I think. Yeah. How they, yeah. 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 Found out, found that out since. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you would think they would tell you that even if you're not into Power Rangers, just as an actor, that like there was a mentor before you and you're like, yeah. it seems like that would yeah. help you, you know? No, <laughs> we've written in there somebody as Zordon, and, and but it, it may well have been in the first description. But the, the whole thing of who Zordon was certainly wasn't explained to me at all. But that, it doesn't matter; it's all part of the fun of it, you know. We we, we we do our own things with it anyway. I was a bit upset that Brian Cranston didn't step back and say, "No, I think Jeff needs to be the." <laughs> but I never mean, mind. Yeah, you know, he needed the work. I think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
Well, well the, yeah. the big man finished breaking beard. So <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> on the of that. So yeah, now in the middle so out. long ago that. <laughs> yeah. Um, while we're on go safe for a second, I want to throw this up here. Um, this is something they mentioned there. There's a simple explanation for that. Do you get that all the time now when people talk about? Uh, I only heard about that during um, during the, uh, the last couple of interviews, right. um, and uh, yeah, I found that hilarious. Uh, so um, yeah, yeah, I, there is a explanation for that. I'm just not going to tell you. So right. um, yeah, <laughs> I I love it. I, it it's funny because I think there are some people that it really annoys them, but I I think it's hilarious because like, how do you explain it? I don't know, whatever. And and to the point where I think if you start doing uh, shows, like a lot of actors will have their own merchandise of like a catchphrase. Yeah. I was thinking the same Matter thing. Person, they're simple. That would be the one for you. That would yeah, be you it. Can, yeah, and, and you can see it. And I just, I, I, I can't. You don't know what to, I don't know what to put it down to. Whether it's just like a nice cliffhanger. But really, there is. Oh, one day it'll be explained. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't. Um, and it, and and I know another way you can look at it. Go. That's really lazy writing. You know why, why didn't they explain it? But you know, I think either way, it's had a good impact because people are still talking about it. So absolutely, also, I mean, yeah, that's yeah. If, if yeah, if nothing else from two seasons, they yeah. will always remember that line. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm looking forward to going to a, a a convention one day and having someone step up and ask a question, and then I'm, I, I just just I'll just pick a random one that I just oh, feel like that's being such a good you know, idea. Explanation for that. That'll go over everyone. Will, it'll everyone will hear. <laughs> Yeah, everyone will cheer. That'd be amazing. You have to do it right before a photo op. So they ask you the question, you say it, and then eh, there's an explanation, and then just instantly just pose. <laughs> yeah, very uh, good. Let me see if we got any other. Um, we're getting, we're going for a while. I don't want to keep it too long. That's right. That's uh, right. Okay, uh, big dog, you got another question loaded and ready to go. Um. Kind of off topic of uh, the acting stuff, I know that uh, just based off this interview, you were saying that uh, you're a big fan of golf. Is there anywhere locally that you like to go, especially after you're done with the go say, uh, or were done with the go say times early that you'd maybe hit the course after uh, an audio session? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm a member of a golf course in Auckland called the Royal Auckland and Grange Golf Club. Um, and so play there regularly, but the, the majority of the work I've done for the last 20 odd years is corporate entertainment. So I tend to travel the country and overseas a lot, uh, in okay. conferences and awards nights and uh, product launches and conventions, uh, sort of things. And so my golf clubs are always with me and nice. driving around and I'm doing a lot at the moment. I'm driving around New Zealand at the moment to stay away from Auckland when it was uh, locked down for a few weeks recently for, for COVID. Mm -hmm. um, I happened to be on the road and I just stayed on the road. And so I've been playing courses mm -hmm. all over the country come out of Queenstown from a weekend in Queenstown, which is sort of our one of our tourist um, venues, a bit like Aspen. It's the mountains and skiing and lakes um, area, um, and but it's got world class golf courses. So I played twice down there. I'm going back there in another two weeks for another golf tournament. Um, yeah, so so yes, my golf clubs are always with me traveling the country. And but as I say, I play overseas. I travel to uh, when we the 2019 before my last my last trips away uh, before we all got closed down. Um, I went to Ireland and the UK, and I went to the uh, the Open Championship in Ireland and Northern Ireland, oh, nice. um, and, and I played all around Ireland and England, uh, and then I also then went to Malaysia for two weeks and played all around Kuala Lumpur and and Malaysia and and, uh, and um, Borneo. So um, yeah, the cl the clubs definitely um, tend to drive my life uh, as opposed to anything. Else. I think I work to play golf as opposed to the other way around. <laughs> there you there go. go. Well, another reason to come to California is we got Pebble Beach. Yeah, because yeah, I've never. I've never had the opportunity. I had my clubs with me when I was in San Fran, and right. I just didn't have a chance to get down to, to play. So I've never actually played in, in the States. Even when I went over in 2015, right. um, I, I tried to get a game in Las Vegas, and they just uh, I couldn't make it happen. So, yeah. Well, you go. now you have to come, because if, if golf is, determines where you go, there you go. <laughs> and look, I'm, I'm not really looking forward to doing conventions when I can, uh, once things get sorted out. We've got the vaccine rolling out over here at the moment. Um, so hopefully you know, we get ourselves secure fairly shortly and we're able to let uh, other people come into the country who have done the same. Um, and you know, once other countries sort of get their systems sorted out and get their um, their communities uh, on the same sort of the thought pattern, yeah, um, yeah you, you, I think everywhere, we're, we're even having it now with the, the naysayers and the conspiracists sort of saying, you know, it's it's got microchips and Bill Gates is it's like... Uh, <laughs> that's <enough>. um, <laughs> So um, yeah, so once once you know we got a majority of people safe and we're all safe, then the travel thing is going to be uh, good, and I'll be I'll be first in line to come over and do some. 
Um, but I, I, I'm an asthmatic, so I'm, I'm slightly co health compromised with COVID right. if I get, I've got amongst it. So just have to be cautious. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's funny. Um, you mentioned how you do all these events now, corporate events and stuff. I saw that on your page. Uh, cause I not as much anymore, but I used to do a lot of, I do caricatures. And so I would be at a lot of those corporate events and I would, do, I also saw that you, um, you sing a lot of Elvis songs and a few times I was an Elvis impersonator and I used to yeah. do improv and I'm like, I like a lot of my past is similar to his, like, like I don't still do that stuff, but like a lot of similar. Yeah. You know, I do. I still do Elvis. I, I only sang at a, um, a wedding two weeks ago, a, a gay couple uh, got married over here that my friend was um, celebrant at, and they wanted to get married in Las Vegas. Okay. And uh, the two girls were talking to my friend about it, and she said, well, you can't go to Vegas, but I can bring Vegas to you. That's and uh, she, she hooked me up with them, so I went around to their house after their, uh, they had the ceremony in the afternoon, then I went to their house that night, and I sang about half an hour of Elvis songs for them and full, so in the full jumpsuit. You, did you do the full jumpsuit? That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, it was, awesome. um, it was a suit I had made about, 10 years ago, maybe seven years ago. Right. Uh, a little on the cuddly side now. It's more like a wetsuit. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, but, uh, hey, they wanted that. So I just thought, you know, that's why you pride and get on it. They enjoyed the echo. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't do it a lot, and I'm not much of a singer. Um, but what's funny is the few times I did it, I learned I could play guitar and sing a little bit, you know, right. so, well, let me fi figure out a couple hound dog and a couple easy songs. And when I got there, they're like, Oh, we don't want you to sing. We just want you to like greet guests. And like, so I was sort of like acting as Elvis, but yeah, I did right. all the prep work and I'm like, Oh, and I hadn't really done a lot of how do you act like Elvis? Cause I thought I was gonna be singing. So I was yeah, like, oh, Hey, uh, I'm Elvis. Yeah. Like, I didn't know what to say. Hey, thank you very much. Yeah. yeah, but like I, 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 I'd done my homework in the absolute yeah. wrong direction. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, I do. I do an annual comp. Uh, so, like, say so when I came over in 2015, it was my, my 50th birthday present to myself. I went to New York for my birthday and for New Year, and then I went down to Memphis for Elvis's 80th birthday at um, at uh, Bristol. And oh, nice. Video and, stuff like that. and then I went to Vegas and I went to a, a karaoke bar and sang Elvis. Um, but what I've been doing on those on the birthday traditionally is in the Coromandel in New Zealand, which is this beautiful. Um, beach, coastline, fishing uh, 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 community. Uh, this town called Papa Aroha. Well, it's not even a town. It's literally a, a campsite um, right on the beach. Go uh, fishing. I've been there on Elvis's birthday, January eighth, every year for the last twelve years, and wow. done an Elvis birthday or um, a concert uh, at, at, the, at the at the holiday camp. And so I get up. The boys put up a trailer, turn it into a stage. I put up my little sound system. All the families come out with the kids. They get dressed up in unit costumes and lays and Hawaiian shirts or the full Elvis suits or the kids, the girls do their hair and the babies come out all dressed up in suits and stuff. It's, it's hilarious. And then I sing for like two or three hours doing Elvis and they dance you know, at two o'clock in the afternoon. There's the Pahutakawa tree, which is a New Zealand native tree. We call it our Christmas tree, New Zealand right. Christmas tree. Beautiful red flowers on it. And they sit underneath these huge trees and drink and eat and dance to Elvis for two or three hours. So it's a great, sounds great fun. Uh, yeah, community. that sounds awesome. I'd go to that. <laughs> We've been doing a few years back, and everyone was like, "Wow!" <laughs> What's your favorite uh, Elvis song to sing when you do do karaoke for it? Uh, so my karaoke burn is um, is uh, well, it wasn't actually an Elvis. The first one I used to do is it's only make believe, which is Elvis did it, but it was actually Conway Twitty that first made it famous. Hmm. Um, my big number now is the the one from the 68 special that he closed, 68 special, If I Can Dream. Um, it's a big ballad, you know, sort of a gospel ballad. Um, and, yeah, that's my favorite number to hit because it's just such a, even today, it's just such a, an amazing message for the world. You know, there's got to be peace there. There must be peace and understanding out there, you know. Um, and it's a message that needs to be reinforced. And I thought it was just such a, a strong song for him to get commissioned and, and, and put it in front of people in, in a time of, you know, 1968 with all the, racial tensions that were going on. So it's, uh, I think it's just a, a, a great anthem for, for a peace and understanding, uh, as the lyrics say. Um, and when it comes to others, I mean, I have great fun with you know, Viva Las Vegas and, um, and Suspicious Minds, etc. Oh, yes. And um, yeah, so yeah, there's so, there's so many, because I just, I just as I say, I sing for two and a half, three hours. You can fit a lot of Elvis songs in the two and a half, three hours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you're also listing the hard ones. Like you're, you're not saying Hound Dog or Jailhouse Rock. You're like, these are the ones you know have to know how to sing to sing too. Yeah. Like, yeah. 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 I, get, I get people from the crowd to come up and sing those ones. Oh, no, there you go. <laughs> 
Um, well, I'll tell you what, why don't we big dog, uh, why don't we each do one more question and then we'll wrap up and, and let Jeffrey give his plugs yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Cool. So, all right. Why don't you go and I'll, I'll do the last one. Yeah. So, uh, I know we've talked about conventions a little bit. Is there, uh, I know you've mentioned in the past, you haven't seen most of the toys or any of the props or things like that, but just based on kind of your imagination from the booth, is there one thing that you're looking forward to having somebody bring to your booth someday and for you to sign just be like oh man this is what it looks like <laughs> this is you know that toy or what have you it's probably, it's probably two of them it probably wouldn't want to be whether there is i don't even know if there is a core egg doll or some sort of figurine um and then the i might have one in his hand right now i had him ready just in case oh, wow look uh, at that cool 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> i've been sent to card so yeah and, and, and you know be happy to, i wouldn't want to sign your figurine that would might devalue it um but uh, yeah, um, but also the the handset, the go the Gosa handset was like quite unique. I saw a um, yeah. when I was in Dubai a few years ago, I was I walked into the one of the malls and they had a meter high Red Ranger, and I was like, seriously? Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> three foot tall. I was like, wow. Um, and it was being in Dubai, of course, it was really expensive. So uh, I didn't yeah. I didn't get on that, but uh, yeah. <laughs> Again, as I say, we just don't get that stuff there because it's not part of the culture. So we just haven't seen any of the merchandise. Right. right. Um, let me see here. No, there's nothing like, is there a Core undies or anything like or uh, you know, bikinis or? Not that I'm aware of, no. Uh, uh, maybe maybe, maybe on Etsy or uh, something like that. Maybe. Yeah, like like fan made but, uh, unofficial stuff. But yeah. it definitely, <laughs> definitely gets a lot of love. He's, he's, a, he's a fan favorite villain for sure. Yeah. Oh, um, and to- as is Daishi, yeah. although. Like as you said, you're one aspect of Daishi. So the, the yeah. version you are, I don't think got a figure. There's the the other version got a figure, but uh, as far as I know, I could be wrong. There might be a monster vinyl out there somewhere. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll, um, I'll, I'll look a bit more into my activity within Daishi because it, it's yeah, as I say, I, I haven't been able to follow the full arc of that character from its beginnings to ends, and so uh, I, I just I know now that I'm a part of that. But uh, yeah, what what the rest of it is is a bit foreign to me. So I feel like I'm sort of undervaluing it to, to fans when they ask because um, I don't have enough information to, to talk knowledgeably on it. Well, you know, if you if you get this part that you auditioned for today, you need to take yeah. notes and, and take yeah. mental pictures so that when people yeah. ask you, you're like, okay, here's everything I can tell you. Like, yeah, exactly, yeah. right? Yeah. The majority of the, you know, Gose even is most, the most recent. You know, Koreg was 10 years ago and, and, and Daishi was even further ago, 15 years ago. My first contact was nearly 20 years ago. I've done, there's a lot of water under the bridge since those. So, uh, yeah, the memory does struggle sometimes with all the different characters and bits and, and not just – Power Rangers once, just because yeah, sure, I'm doing all sorts. Yeah. Of you were learning two plays at the. You were doing a play and learning a play for nine years. I mean, yeah. that's gonna. <laughs> you got to be able to purge to be able to put a new. Absolutely. But it all comes back to rugby. That's what matters. All comes back to rugby. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, it's literally, that's what I do. I purge. When I finish a production, within within a week, I probably wouldn't be able to quote you dialogue from it if I've done a, a musical or whatever. I yeah, you know, I did the sound of music a few years back. I, I can't remember the, the words to Angel Voice. You know, it's, a, it's a really simple song. I can't right. remember any dialogue. You know, it's, it's just what you do. You 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 do, you do what you need to for the time, and then your mind does this almost like um, what was what was the name of that toy that you used to write stuff on and you can wipe it. And, oh, the Ninja Sketch. Yeah, yeah that, that, that's literally what my brain is like. This guy's see you later. But I mean, if that's if that allows you to do what you do, then that's a good quality yeah. to have. Yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Reboots right. affect things. Okay, so I don't see anything else in chat. I'm going to end with the same. Now, this question might be difficult for you. This is the question I ask every guest. Um, yeah. And because of your limited knowledge of, of Power Rangers, but what I always say is Red Rangers are typically the leaders. And I yeah. say, what? who do you think is the best Red Ranger? And you could base that on an actor that you like or the, the character, suit anything. Now, you might know one Red Ranger. Any Red Ranger you want to pick as the best Red Ranger for whatever criteria. Could you even do that? Was Pua a Red Ranger? Was who? Was Pua Mangasiba a Red Ranger? Yeah, uh, in Ninja Storm. Yeah, I'm going for Pua because he's my bro. Uh, okay. Rest of the but, um, yeah, yeah. Well, was... I mean that that makes sense. You got a the hometown hero. You got to go for that. Uh, yeah. I will say, uh, no disrespect, but you're wrong. Uh, Casey from Jungle Fury is the best Red Ranger. As <laughs> you know, a lot of people get this wrong. A lot of people have the wrong opinion, and that's not your fault. It's just. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, not watch it, but yeah, no. I mean, yeah. Pua was a longtime friend. Of, I knew his brother before Paul. He's the younger brother. Robbie is a, a longtime friend of mine from uh, from uh, Wellington days, mm-hmm. um, and uh, I, I've done a lot of shows within the Samoan community, uh, right. and 
a lot of support and help from those guys. And so, uh, you know, um, the sad situation involving Tua was, uh, you know, heartbreaking for everybody because uh, he was an extraordinary talent. And, uh, you know, getting the chance he got on uh, on uh, Power Rangers was uh, a, a real stepping stone for him. And it's just sad that he didn't have that confidence in himself to you know, move forward. Yeah, unfortunately, a lot of times talent and, and issues go together like that for some reason. Yeah. <laughs> um. All right, well... Do you, I know, well, I'll ask anyway, because uh, do you have any upcoming projects that you can talk about? Because I know a lot of times you can't say what's going on, anything or promote um, or discuss. Yeah, so, um, uh, I, I probably can now say something because at the time I couldn't, because uh, I, know, I know it's coming to Netflix shortly. So um, there's, um, but I'm not even sure what it's going to be called. Um, uh, we, it was, working title for it with us was Sweet Tooth. So um, is it uh, based a, on a, a comic book? Yeah, yeah, a graphic novel. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Um, I've heard of Sweet yep, Tooth. Yeah, yep, that's, I am very that's, familiar with Sweet Tooth. Yeah, that's actually kind of a big deal. Yeah. So, so there's, um, yeah, it's coming to Netflix in the next couple of months. So I, I just did some uh, ADR for it about a um, month and a half ago, two months, and the and the producer said it's going to be on Netflix. I think in June. So yeah. Perfect. That's uh, that's big news. That's cool. Like yeah. I, whatever you said, good for you. You're doing work. We'll send people there. But that, like, again, it's like, oh, I read comics. I know Sweet Tooth. Great. Awesome. That's that's. That's a, that's a known property. That's that's pretty awesome that you got to do that. Um, and I'm just trying to think if there's any other sort of – I just did this Texan um, uh, a thing that's been it's, it's set in Texas, but they filmed it in New Zealand. Um, but it doesn't have a working title, so I can't really tell you much about that one. Okay. Yeah. Fair so, enough. But that, that will be – and I think that might even be a feature. It's, it's, not a, it's not a series. Sweet Tooth's a series that's being done, so they're filming the whole thing here. Which makes sense, again, because it's a serialized story. That That's great. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's rolling through probably here for a couple of years, apparently. We just heard that they've um, reconfirmed that they're coming back to continue on with the story, so which is great. Awesome. I mean, New Zealand, because of COVID, New Zealand, is, uh, it's, it's, there's a sad uh, up, uptake for us. Is a lot of American productions are coming here because they can't work uh, fully in America. Right, um, sure. Because of the working, well, because of the, the the social distancing restrictions. Well, especially just, because so much is done in California, and we're in California, and we're like more locked down than anybody. So it's yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Well, uh, so yeah, so they're coming here to do it now. They're bringing in key crew, and then they're populating them with with uh, New Zealand actors and, and producers and uh, uh, cameramen, etc. So <clears throat> we've got the um, the Amazon Prime production, which I think they've just started talking about online now, uh, which has been done, which is sort of based on. It's not Lord of the Rings, but it's mm -hmm. based on. In style stories, um, right. it's sort of sort of a prequel centuries prequel. Uh, Is it to the, based on the, what was it, the Cimmerillion? Yeah, I was thinking that. Yeah, it's it's very it's it's sort of setting up. There are some of the older the characters that you're familiar with, the very old ancient characters are going to be included, but it's it's mm -hmm. centuries before Lord of the Rings and Hobbit. So gotcha. It's in a very, so very maybe Mr. Gandalf as a young man. <laughs> yeah, a little bit like that, and and, and yeah. but it's based on any Tolkien. Writings, I don't think it's just done in his style, so that gotcha. I think is really yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's in New Zealand. The right. Avatar, the three Avatar movies have just finished over here, um, right. they're in post production now. Um, there's, um, as I say, the Sweet Tooth is being done there. Um, so there's yeah, a, a real, um, it, it, I, think I think we're as full as we can be because, of course, <laughs> we're working on the number of um, production staff and things we have so. Yeah, productions are wanting to come in to do more, but they just they just can't populate them with staff at the moment. So yeah. Right. Well, that's I mean, that's good for you guys. Yeah, you good know? problem to have. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so uh, as far as uh, any social media, um, I know you're on like Instagram and if you play anything you want to shout out to let people know where to find you. Yeah, sure. I mean, there's my fan page on um on uh, um Facebook. Uh, that's I mean I'm, I'm old, so that's the, my main my main go. <laughs> right. Um, Instagram, I'm, not, I'm definitely on Instagram. I'm not an overly active user of Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, I'm fine. And it, I've got a couple of sites on, on Facebook. So there's my personal one. We not have any stuff. And I've got a fan page on there. So if you see a couple of right. profiles, I'm a fan of Jeffrey Dolan. Uh, you go to the, uh, go to the, the fan one. The, the fan a, ones would have a picture of you as uh, in one of your roles, I'm assuming, as opposed to just like with your family. <laughs> It'd be a good way to tell yeah, the difference. You know, I think my cover <laughs> photos are a bit similar. I've just changed out the cover photo for... Uh, if you see a photograph that's me sort of as a as a headshot, that's that's the fan page. Uh, right. The other one I've changed out is me um, uh, just at a dinner I was at on Saturday night. Actually, I'll just change the profile. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, nope, that's not me. I don't go to the one that's got Marilyn Monroe in the background. Um, and I yeah, had, I, I'm sorry. Go on, ahead. Too, I've got a Facebook. I'm sorry, a YouTube channel uh, which I produced a whole pile of uh, clips during COVID last year. 
based on my character from the Almighty Johnsons. From that's Derek. on your Instagram too, right? Because that's where I saw those. Yeah, I would put. Yeah, I was, I was putting them up on Instagram as well. But the whole series is up on on uh, YouTube as well. So yeah. And what's um, the name of the YouTube channel? Uh, yeah, J uh, Jeffrey Dolan's for Jeff Dolan. Oh, okay, because I know your your Instagram was something slightly different. Like I can't remember. Yeah, big, yeah, big big pain. There you go. Okay, what, what's the go. story? There's a story there. Uh, big cane. It's it's the, the um, rugby. <laughs> Oh, okay. There you go. I told you it all comes back all to comes rugby. Back to rugby. I am um, um, my my rugby team over here uh, in the in the main competition in New Zealand are the Hurricanes, or we just call them the Canes. So I'm a, I'm big Kane. So yeah. Gotcha. Nice. Um, the other thing I don't know. Again, when I watched the other interview, you talked about uh, you were doing autograph photos. Are you still doing that? Yeah, 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 yeah. So um, if you go on the fan page and communicate with me through that, yeah, I can uh, autograph photograph on there. Um, and I think when we initially started doing them, they were like fifty dollars. But we've sort of uh, sort of sitting back a bit further now, sort of going with postage and everything. Like I'm happy if people want to do that. I've, I've got they can uh, we can communicate through a via a messenger or whatever, or on on the a fan page and sort of thirty five US plus uh, postage, and I'll I'll personalize them and sign them, and we can and just. And this is the photo I'm showing. Is this what they would get? That's it. Yeah, yeah. So it's the three, three main characters. Plus my Derek character in the bottom there from uh, the Almighty Johnsons. Nice. And that, that's the photo you can see on my fan page in the middle. So yeah. Perfect. Cool, man. Yeah. Yeah. Put you back. All right. So I think I think that's it. Unless you got anything else, big dog. I'll check chat real quick to make sure uh, I didn't miss anything. That's it. Thank you so much again for taking the time with us today. It's been awesome to yeah. find out so much more than you know many people had known before today. So uh, I yeah. loved hearing all those rugby stories. Those are great. <laughs> Yeah, I hope we did a good job not asking the same questions you always get. <laughs> That's right. No, yeah, I don't mind. And I know sometimes you, know, you guys have different uh, channels of people that listen to your slot and the other guys have different ones. So yeah, you're yeah. always going to – it's because there's a new audience all the time. So that's cool. There you um, go. But, we didn't ask you about Korag and go say people would be like, what are you doing? Why – Why? you know, come on. <laughs> yeah. But um, thanks for putting up with uh, my slight technical issues at the start as well. Uh, much appreciated. No, we, we no worries. Here. You're doing you us a favor, man. Don't worry. About yeah, it. you got nothing on me. I'm the king of technical issues here. So, now small potatoes. All right. Well, let's think about the audience and I'll end the live broadcast. So, everybody watching, thanks so much. And uh, remember, uh, I'm Gazbot. Big dog. Jeffrey. I'm Jeff and <laughs> I can tell you, uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Same to you and to, to the, the power. power. See Bye, you guys everybody. later. Bye now.